Hey guys, it's Miss Britt. So today we are going to um, be what's called word detectives. And I know that you know what this is because you have been trying to figure out words since you started learning how to read. So I'm going to read this text to you, Animal Tongues. And as I am reading this text, I am going to choose four words for you. I've got an example here and I'll go over it when it's time but I'm going to choose four words for you to be a word detective and try and figure out. Now, the strategies that you're going to use are context clues, which are clues that you get from the text. For example, you're going to look at other words and the punctuation around the unknown word to help you figure out its meaning. Sometimes you're going to need to reread the sentences before and after the unknown word. What words around the unknown word do you know? How can the words around it help you? You are also going to be looking to see if there are any punctuation clues like commas, dashes, or parentheses, which are those two lines that go on the outside that are curved, parentheses, to indicate that the author is defining a word. So when we get to examples like that, I'm going to share them with you because I love when the author gives me definitions in the text. The other thing, the next strategy, one of the strategies you're going to be using is called recalling your background knowledge. So you're going to be thinking about all the information that you know pertaining to this topic. So you're going to think about, well, what do I know about animal tongues. What kind of background knowledge do I already have? What do you already know? What have you possibly read in the past about this topic? Have you had personal experiences with this topic or idea? And you can think about what are they? What do you know about the ideas presented in this sentence? Okay. And the last one is one of my all-time favorites, especially as a college student. I love to search the glossary or Google. So whichever one works for me, um, searching the glossary is my last strategy, but it is definitely one that I use. You can use the glossary in the back of the text to confirm or to clarify a definition of an unknown word. So hopefully it's in the back, but if it's not in the back, you can um, check and check, check it out on Google. Um, is the word highlighted? Is it in a different color? Because that's normally whenever they use the text features of highlighting or putting it in a different color or putting it in bold, most of the time you can find it in the back of the book, okay? So let's get started with animal tongues. We may or may not get through all of this text and I will determine whether or not we need to do the same um, lesson tomorrow with the rest of the text. All right, people tongues. People use their tongues to help taste, chew, and swallow food, the same way many animals do. We also use our tongues for something pretty amazing, to talk. Words are formed by moving air throughout our mouths in special ways, and our tongues help shape the way the air moves and sounds. Human tongues are covered with about 10,000 taste buds when they are young, when we're young and only half as many when we're adults. Taste buds help us to know when something is sweet, salty, sour, or bitter. Ever wonder why most people have bad breath when they first wake up in the morning? Bacteria caught between the taste buds make a stinky smell. Remember how many there are. So there's, when you, at your age, you've got like 10,000 right now. And if you don't brush your tongue at night, Whenever you go to bed, sometimes the bacteria gets left there and then you can wake up with stinky breath. I brush my tongue at night and sometimes I still wake up with stinky breath and I can't wait to brush my teeth again. Test it out. Try saying the following classic tongue twister without moving your tongue at all. Mm, uh, let me see. Ha, 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 ha. What happens? Can your friend understand a single word you're saying? You probably can understand a little bit because, of course, you knew where I was at in the text. 
How hard do you have to concentrate to keep your tongue from moving? I was concentrating pretty hard. So everybody here, pause the video and try to say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers and hold your tongue out while you say it. Kind of like these crazy people are doing here. Oh my goodness, one of my favorite all-time tongues, especially this one right here. I love the bulldog. Dog tongues. Dogs would die if they didn't have tongues. When people get hot, we lower our body temperature by sweating through sweat glands. You know, the water that comes out of your body, you know, when you start getting hot and sweaty. Dogs only have sweat glands on the bottom of their paws. So they lower their body temperatures with their tongues. When a dog sticks out its tongue and pants, it cools its mouth and tongue and also the blood circulating in its head. Dogs also hang their tongues out when they are looking forward to a special treat or something they love to do, like going for a walk. I have to say that word very quietly because my two dogs are on the couch. Guess what? A full-bred chow and Sharpe dogs have blue-black tongues, and the reason is a mystery. Sometimes other breeds of dogs have small blue-black spots on their tongues. No one knows why that is. Stella has those spots. Cat tongues. This is Miss Todd's favorite. All kinds of cats, little cats, big cats, house cats, wild cats, use their tongues to clean their fur. A cat's tongue has a lot of small bumps on it called, I had to look up how to pronounce this word. It is pupili, pupili. And each bump has a small hook at the end of it. On your document, I put the pronunciation guide right here to help you. Pupili, pupili. Pupili hooks act like combs when a cat licks itself, removing loose fur, dirt, and food particles from the cat's fur. Puppily hooks are too small to see without a microscope, but they are why your cat's tongue feels so rough when it licks your skin. Tongue baths do more for cats than keep them clean. When it's hot outside, a tongue bath helps cool them off, and when it's cold, a tongue bath soothes the fur hairs smooths the fur hairs close together so the cat's body heat stays next to its skin. Tongue baths also help cats spread scent molecules in their saliva onto their fur so mommy cats can recognize their kittens and cubs. That's pretty cool. So the first word from the text that is your example is puppily and the um, example wants you to put what page you found it on, and then it wants you to put the sentence. So the sentence was, a cat's tongue has lots of small bumps on it. See these parentheses? That is, that's one way an author helps you to learn definition. So it puts the definition or the meaning before it and then tells you what the word is, or sometimes they put the word before and then put the definition in parentheses. I do this to help my students learn new words. And then you can look it up in the glossary, but we don't have to look this word up because we can use the context clues. A cat's tongue has lots of small bumps on it called puppily. So since we know that puppily is small bumps, we also know that each bump has a small hook on it. So what could I put as the, um, what the word means? I can put small bumps and I could even put small bumps with hooks on the end if I wanted to. Giraffe tongues. Giraffes use their long, almost two feet long tongues to pull the tops of tall tree branches down to their mouth so they can eat the leaves. Their tongues are so strong that giraffes can pull down heavy branches and chew thorns without hurting themselves. Scientists describe the giraffe's tongue as prehensile, which means it has adapted for holding and grasping. All right, so your next word is prehensile, and it is on page 12. So this is going to be on your document, 
prehensile. People are often amazed when they see a giraffe's tongue up close because it's black. Since giraffes need to eat leaves all day to get enough food, their tongues are exposed to a lot of sun. Scientists believe the black tongue color keeps it from getting sunburned. Pretty cool. I didn't know that. Hmm. Test it out. Pretend you are trying to clean some cake frosting off the side of your mouth with your tongue. Can you feel your tongue stretching? Now imagine you have cake frosting stuck to your ear. Can you stretch your tongue that far? Giraffes use their tongues to clean bugs out of their ears. Wonder if they like some cake frosting. Well, I'm not going to feed them cake frosting because I know it would not be a good thing for their diet. Oh my goodness, how cute are they? Oh. Nectar bat tongues. A nectar bat from South America takes the prize for the longest tongue. It's 1.5 times longer than its body. So what they should be saying is the longest tongue compared to the size of its body. That's what it should say. Scientists believe the bat has such a long tongue because it feeds on the nectar of a very long flower. The bat's tongue is a hollow tube, like a soda straw, so that it can suck the nectar from inside the flower. Where does the bat keep its tongue when it's not eating? In its rib cage, of course. The nectar bat shown here is from southeastern Arizona, and its favorite food is the sweet nectar in flowering cactus. Test it out to see how long the nectar's bat nectar bat's tongue is, stand against the wall and have a friend measure your height. Multiply the measurement by 1.5. This means one and a half. Cut a piece of yarn or string to its length, then hold it against one side of your mouth and imagine how you would find a tongue this long in your mouth, how you would fit a tongue this long in your mouth. Hoo-wee! So that would be a tongue that is about seven and a half feet from just me. Whew. These are not tongues that I like to see at all. Snake tongues. People who don't like snakes really don't like snake tongues. Hey, that's me. When they see the snake's tongue flicking in and out, they often get scared or grossed out. The snake isn't trying to scare them though. It is just trying to smell them. When a snake flicks its tongue in and out, the tip of the snake's tongue collects scent molecules from the air and brings them back to the Jacobson's organ on the roof of its mouth. The Jacobson's organ tells the snake if there is a tasty snack, a big fat rat maybe, nearby. The V shape, also called a fork, is the snake's, in the snake's tongue helps tell the snake which direction a smell is coming from. Male snakes also use their tongues to smell the air for females. Totally cool. Snakes don't have to open their mouths to stick out their tongue. Instead, the tongue goes through a hole on the top of the mouth. You can kind of see that up here. Ooh wee. All right. We're gonna do molecules. What do you think molecules are from page 16? How cool is this little guy? The blue tongue skink tongues. Okay, so that's his name. He's the blue tongue skink, but he's, this is also about his tongue. Blue tongue skinks are one of six different types of Australian lizards that have blue tongues. They use their tongues to smell their surroundings in the same way snakes do. They also use their tongues to scare away predators such as eagles, snakes, and large lizards that are trying to eat them. When a predator comes too close, the blue tongue skink first tries to make it go away by hissing and making its body look big, so it puffs out its body. If that doesn't work, the skink sticks out its long blue tongue. Some scientists think the sudden appearance of a bright blue tongue surprises predators, giving the skink a chance to run away to safety. 
other scientists think the bright blue tongue works like a warning color, telling predators that the skink is poisonous and might bite. Pretty cool. Suck on a blue popsicle until your tongue is bright blue. Then go stick your tongue out at your mom and see if she is afraid or surprised. Oh, I have a really funny story. One time when I was little, I used to love to eat the um, blue raspberry um, lollipops. And when I, I was eating one and I had been sick, I'd had bronchitis and I had eaten it and fallen asleep in the chair in the living room. And my mom came out of the kitchen and was frantically shaking me to try and wake me up because my lips were blue and, and I, all she could see was blue. And she was frantically waking me up thinking that I was not breathing because my lips were blue because I had eaten a blue um, popsicle, well, blue lollipop. So do not scare your parents, friends. Let them know you're having a blue popsicle. Chameleon tongues. Chameleon's best hunting tool is its amazing trick tongue. The tongue shoots out of the chameleon's mouth with force from a very strong muscle. As the tongue comes out, it stretches up to six times its length. In fact, a chameleon stretched out tongue can be as long as one and a half times longer than its body, which is very similar to the nectar bat. Now imagine the chameleon is hiding in a bush, waiting for a tasty insect to fly nearby. Its tongue is fast and long, but how does it catch breakfast? When the tip of the chameleon's tongue hits its target, the edges fold around the prey, holding it tight until the tasty treat is back in its mouth. Look at the tip of that tongue. See how it kind of looks like it's all around the fly, even here? It folds around. I did not know that. How fast is fast? Want to know how fast a chameleon's tongue comes out of its mouth? Clap your hands together once or snap your fingers. In the time your hands were together, a chameleon's tongue could have shot out of its mouth 16 different times. What? I feel like I should just skip this page. Ooh. Crocodile tongues. Did you try the test it out challenge on page six that asks you to say a tongue twister without moving your tongue? Why, yes. Yes, I did. If a crocodile tried to say the same tongue twister, its words wouldn't make any sense either. Crocodile tongues are attached to the bottom of their mouths and can't move because their tongues can't move they can't use them to help chew their food. Instead, crocodiles have extra strong digestive acids that start breaking their food into pieces before they swallow. It is a good thing crocodiles only talk in cartoons. Crocodile, car <laughs> crocodile tongues have special glands that let them live in salt water. Salt that builds up in the crocodile's body is squeezed out through the salt glands so the extra salt can't hurt their bodies. Alligators do not have salt glands on their tongues and would die in a few days if they tried to live in salt water. Let's try this one out. Digestive acids. Let's try that one out. I'm going to put it on the um, document for page 23, digestive acids. What do you think digestive acids are based on the context clues? Oh my goodness. If you have never seen the movie Free Willy, and I think there's like four of them. I loved it when I was your age. It makes you think very differently about killer whales. Killer whale tongues. Killer whales, also called orcas, have bright pink tongues because they are mammals. Newborn whale calves drink milk from their mothers when they're young. When a human baby nurses, its mom sits down and holds it. Whale moms, though, have to keep swimming while they nurse, and they don't have arms to hold on to the babies. Instead, baby whales have small bumps. There's that word again. How do we say it? Puppily on the edges of their tongues that help them hang on tight to their moms while they're nursing. 
Orcas were named killer whales in the 1800s by fishermen who watched the orcas attack and kill large baleen whales. The fishermen saw the orcas biting at the mouths of baleen whales, eating just their lips and tongues. Wow. Baby dolphins also have puppily bumps on their tongues to help them nurse and hang on while mom swims. That's pretty cool. Guess what? Scientists have found that the baleen whale's tongue keeps, helps move heat through the whale's body while it hunts for food while it's with its mouth open in cold ocean water. The tongue works like a built-in heater. Pretty cool, which may have a lot of nutrients and that's probably why the orca or the killer whale loves to eat them. That's pretty cool. Parrot tongues. Most birds use their tongues to get food. Parrots eat a lot of big seeds and their long tongues help them hold and crush the seed shells. Many parrots also use their tongue to help them make sounds and say words. The sounds are formed in the back of the bird's throat. When the birds move their tongues back and forth while they talk, they change the shape of the air and the sounds they produce. Tongue shapes tell stories. You can usually tell what a bird eats by the shape of its tongue. Ooh, I knew this. And if you had Miss Edwards, I bet you knew this too. Birds that suck nectar have hollow straw-like tongues, while birds that scoop nectar out of flowers have brush-like shapes at the tips of their tongues. Birds that use their tongues to catch bugs, such as woodpeckers, have pointed spear-like tongues or sticky tongues and birds that eat a lot of slippery fish have pointy spikes on their tongues that help them push the fish down their throats. Pretty cool. Hummingbird moth tongues? I didn't even know there was such a thing as a hummingbird moth. That's cool. Like many butterflies, hummingbird moths get their food by sucking sweet nectar through their tongues, called a proboscis, from flowers. Their tongues are hollow like drunk drinking straws and thin like a sewing needle. Your last word is proboscis. Since hummingbird moths sometimes need to get nectar from very big flowers, they need very long tongues. Their tongues are often longer than their bodies. Wait, Stop for a minute and think about that. Imagine your tongue is as long as your body or longer. How would you fit it in your mouth? The hummingbird moth keeps its long tongue coiled up in a tight circle under its head when it's not being used. I really need a picture of that. So I'm assuming that this stays just on the outside of its body underneath its head. That's crazy. What's in a name? Hummingbird moths were named after hummingbirds because both have wings that make a humming sound when they hover near a flower. Hummingbird moths share another trait with hummingbirds, a very long tongue. A hummingbird's tongue is too long to fit in its mouth, so some of the tongue stays in the front of the bird's head in its skull. Above, a curled up tongue, here. Right, an extended tongue drawing nectar from a flower. I love when um, an author and illustrator work together to make sure that you know which one you're looking at. So above picture is the curled up tongue. The picture that's to the right is the extended tongue drawing nectar from a flower. I am going to stop reading here today because the next section is about trivia and um, I'm going to read through it and see what we can do with that tomorrow. So you have your four words. You have your four words, prehensile, molecules, digestive acids, and proboscis. I've put the page numbers on here so that you can um, do what happened up here. So I want you to give me the quote from the text. Do you see those two little lines? That um, when you look on a keyboard, you find it right here. 
I want you to give me the quote from the story. So you're going to tell me where it was found and that will change where you found it. I'm sorry, I told you where you found it. So I found it on page 12, but you're going to tell me the words from the story. So you have to give me the quote. Okay, so I want the quote, which is this part. I want that. And then I want you, the next part says, I have a kitten at home and I've seen bumps on its tongue. This is information that you have that would be considered um, background knowledge. So this is the context clues, the sentences that you used. This is what you know because you have background knowledge. And then if you ended up using a glossary, you would put that here. But I still expect the sentence. Make sure that you give me the sentence from the story that uses each one of these words. So on page 12, what was the sentence that used prehensile? That's what I want you to do. So you would look back at page 12 in the video and you would find the word prehensile and then you would find the beginning of the sentence, which is scientist, to the end of the sentence where the period is. Scientists describe the giraffe's tongue as prehensile, which means it has adapted for holding and grasping. You would put that in the document, okay? I want that and then the last part over here is what you say the word means. So give me what it means here. If you ended up looking it up on Google, then you can tell me I Googled it because, well, I guess I can show you the glossary real quick. There's the glossary. So if you took it from the glossary, then you've got it. You can pause the video and help yourself. All right, my friends, message me if you have any questions.